Hello again, everybody. It's uh, Harry Box for the Technical Trader. It's Wednesday, the 7th of March, and these are the charts of the day. We're going to look at both longs and shorts today. Um, stocks of the day today. Bonton stores up 33% at 2.6 million, jumped to $1.73, closed just under 7. It did tag 7.19 and backed off to 6.98. No, nevertheless, a substantial price volume surge. Now, you'll note that we had looked at this stock here when it broke out in January. It then went in after this big downtrend. It then went into a uh, nice little coiling bull coil pattern, low volume. Moved up last week and today popped explosively on a big volume for that stock. 2.6 million, by far the biggest volume in a long, long time. The next target at this point is up to around the $8 range, followed by 10 and a half. Antigenics. Well, we saw that big spike, spike up in October, only to fall back down to new lows. But since then, it's moved from about two up to four and three quarters, 472 to be exact today, close at 449, up 73 cents. 19.4% on a million shares. That's big buy for that stock. And you can see the highest close since July. Now, if we look back a little further, you'll see a big line of resistance up at around five, call it 540, 535. That'll be my near term target. And should I get through that? I would look at these highs in here as the next resistance level and target around 665. TEAR, Archaeologics, which had been moving up steadily since the uh, December low around a dollar, has gone up to 231 today. Now, it closed just a nickel off the high, up 24 cents or 12%, and 333,000 traded. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a thinly traded stock, and as you can see, one of the bigger volumes since February. Now, the stock popped up and slightly through and closed at this line of resistance. If it does get through, the next target is up at these, this double top here around 285. INVN, well, um, this fairly new issue, um, which ran from uh, the late um, December lows in around the nine and a half range, all the way up to 19 and change, pulled back recently, and it looked like it may be breaking down around right to the trend line, but the lateral trend line and the 50 period moving average, held it for like four days, and today popped. $1.54, 10.2%. 9 million traded, big volume in that stock. Now I'm going to watch the 50 period moving average right now, which is co coming in around um, 17.06. And then the declining tops line, which comes in around 17.90. So those are your levels of resistance. Should we get through that? I'm looking for something in the low 20s, 22 and a half or so. <clears throat> Harvest natural resources. Well, for an oil stock, this wasn't looking too good, was it? But suddenly, yesterday, and a big breakaway gap and surge. Um, the stock broke through resistance and backed off. Today, came on again and closed at a high for the day, which is always bullish following a big gap like that. And one and three quarter million share traded up 57 cents or 7.4 percent. What I'm looking for is a move up into this nine and a half three quarter zone short term. That's my short term target, followed by about 11 and a half three quarters secondary target. Valero Energy, big big kind of basing pattern. And there's your line of resistance, which we got right up to today and closed right on. 27, up $1.83 or 7 and a quarter percent. Now, if it does get through here, my target is 30 and a half short term, and we'll see what happens. Iridium. Well, more significantly than anything is the fact that the declining tops line here was challenged and backed off of. So we're going to have to see, and not much of, excuse me, didn't back off, closed right on it. And that's a very strong way to close the day. Only a nickel off the high of 57 cents or 7% on um, 668,000 shares. Now, again, it doesn't sound like a lot, but the way the stock's been acting, and with all these highs in here across that zone, we need to see if we can take out the 9, 9, 10 zone, which is short term resistance. If we do get through there, I look for a move up to about 10 and then up about 11. Boeing Go Wireless, WIF5, break, broke through this key level of resistance today and may test this spike here up around 11, 11, uh, 11, 11, 10 zone short term. Should I get through that? I'm looking for a post IPO test of 13 range, my short term target. Clean Energy has been on a tear, and you can see it's moved from 11.35 up to uh, 20, nearly 21, almost doubling, backed off, and then it's coming out again. Doesn't look like there's any quit in this, but I would keep an eye on 1830 as support right now and let it go 
for a target of about 22 and three quarters, 23 zone short term. Best shipping stock out there? C SPAN, SSW. After a big drop from over 20 down into a double bottoming around 10, the stock ran right back up, platform tested the breakout point and the 50 day, popped, formed a little bit of a bull flag in here, and then popped again. You can see how this is beautifully stair stepping its way higher. I'd have to give you a and it may be actually at the top of the channel right in here. But keep your eye on this because should it go through this zone, it can explode. And we can see the all-time high up here around 2035. Could be tested very quickly in the next day or two. Beyond that, we could see a big winner in this stock, particularly with the way the shipping stocks have acted of late. If we do get the breakout above that zone, let's call it right there. And you can go back here and see where resistance is. I move through that level. Could easily move this up towards the 25 level and then maybe 30, 32 zone. So keep your eye on C-SPAN. DUSA, D-U-S-A. Nice move today. You can see that the big run-up we had in uh, the end of last year, beginning of this year, I'm sorry, the mid last year, rolled over into the double bottom here in October, December. Finally, to move up and out. Pull back and consolidated. But the last two days have been significant. As yesterday, it spiked up. 1.7 million today it added um, on 825,000 shares it added another 25 cents or 4.3 percent there was some double tops up in the zone we'll be testing shortly around six and a half three quarters now should it get through there I'm looking for a stock to get up towards eight MDSO big declining top sign broken today with a big thrust oh excuse me that was yesterday and a nice follow through today of 97 cents or four percent million share traded the stock certainly looks like it has momentum at this point we may very well get a test up in this 26 and a half seven zone short term. Now I'll look at some of the ultra shorts. You know, the market was up today. Let's see how they acted. The TZA was down after hitting the top of this short term channel and near declining 50. The pullback wasn't that bad. Um, it still remains in the conf confines of this rising channel right there. And let's see what it does in the next day or so. If you can hold it here consolidate for a day or two and then spike up. We may very well get a test of 23 and then 24 and a half with a secondary target of 27. That's my uh, swing trade target is up around 24. EDZ popped right to resistance and backed off today. The volume was about half of yesterday. That's a good thing. Let, let's just see what, what occurs with that one going forward. The FAZ um, backed off as well. You can see where resistance lies. It's going to be very distinct now. If we need to get to this spike right here at 27 and a quarter, 27, 28 to get it going. Targets are then 29 and a half, 31 zone, and then 33 zone. But again, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Just wanted you to point point out the pattern that this long declining channel may be turning here. We just have to keep close tabs on it. It may be premature, but we shall see. TVIX backed off today, 90 cents, a big hit for that one. And the, the, the wedge pattern here, is in jeopardy of a breakdown. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt and see what happens tomorrow. I suspect we may see the market actually move lower tomorrow with this moving up, but we'll see. Support right now, uh, definitively on the TVIX, is right here at about 1560, something like that. And we're not that far from it, so let's see what it does with support. Notice the moving average of turn around flat now, slightly turning up here. Could be a good sign. We'll see. Haven't crossed over yet. We haven't broken out yet. Technicals are just um, less than a little lethargic. So I'm not anticipating this until I see what happens because this could easily break down and get into the um, low teens. Moving on to some of the shorts. I want, to, I want you to see how some of the patterns are developing in the box of shorts area. For starters, First Solar absolutely getting hammered every day. And for two weeks now, it's dropped from 50 to 25 in half. That's actually over three weeks, three and a half weeks. Call it one, two, three. Yeah, this is in the fourth week. So, but still, when you get cut in half in less than a month, unbelievable. It broke support here and it's been coming down ever since. When it got here, it's paused for one day. That was it. It continues lower. Um, the solar group has been hammered with the with the ruling out of Germany about uh, uh, the lack of um, support from uh, some of the German uh, from the German government. Anyway, so. Um, we can see this come down to 20 without a problem, in my opinion, but stay tuned on that one. Ultra Petroleum, UPL. 
in a declining channel, in a declining channel within that channel, and beneath the moving averages, each high successively lower, each low slightly lower. If we are able to take out this low about 2285, we can see this come down towards 20 pretty quickly, maybe even in the high teens. UAN, that's CVR Partners, pretty nasty looking pattern. This uh, large rising channel, or whatever you want to call it, formed a little head and shoulders here, broke down, snapped back to the moving averages, failed and rolled over. If it should take out the spike low at 24 and a quarter, look for a test of 21 and a half or so, and then possibly all the way down to test this low near 20 and a half, three quarters down here. That's what I'm looking for. Technicals look terrible. I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen. Decker's got slam dunk today, almost 10%. Down 733 on 7.7 .7 million. Anytime you're in a bear phase like this is and you get increasing volume as the stock goes down, it's pretty ugly. However, on the plus side, if there is one, we're at the bottom of the channel, it appears, right here. And so we may get a snapback towards the 72 3 zone. Um, I would use that as a shorting opportunity. What I'm looking for after this kind of a drop, similar to here, is a bounce back at consolidation and then lower levels. But if the market pressure is lower, we could see even high 50s, low 60s on this. APEI, well, this mini head and shoulders pattern broke with a thrust. And since then, five days of bear flagging. This looks quite vulnerable to a hit, folks. My target is 33, 33 and a half short term. OPNT OpNet, very similar pattern to um, was that uh, one of the other stocks I just showed you that broke within the confines of a down channel. It's got another little down channel. I can see the stock rolling over to test 25.6 on very quickly. And if it breaks this long support zone here, who knows where we can go? Maybe even 20, 22. And lastly is Pitney Bowes, which broke today and yesterday and today, this little bear flag broke. It's got key support here. If it takes out the November lows around the 17, 30, 35, Pitney Bowes may very well head towards the bottom of the channel which right now the way it's drawn says it could be a $12, $13 stock in immediate term. So stay tuned on that one. Could be some trouble there. This is HP saying have a good evening, everyone. Talk to you tomorrow.